So Lean Startup is um, the application of lean manufacturing, you know, iterative experimental techniques to the process of innovation itself. It's a management system that's designed for situations of extreme uncertainty. And my background is as an engineer and as an entrepreneur. Uh, I'm very used to building new companies from scratch where we don't really know what's going to happen in the future. And so uh, we do the best that we can to make some educated guesses that we used to call business planning. Well, fast forward a few years after starting to write about the process of thinking about that, one of the realizations that I had was that many traditional management practices only really work if you're able to make an accurate forecast about the future. And as I've traveled the world of business, especially the last five years, you meet more and more and more companies who are saying, you know what, uh, my world is not getting more predictable and easier to forecast every day. In fact, the pace of change is uh, higher. There's more and more uncertainty in more and more areas of my business. I have to work harder to discover new areas of growth. And don't even get me started on this whole digital thing. Right. So all of those challenges are entrepreneurial challenges, no matter how big your company is and no matter what it says on your business card. And so Lean Startup is a management system that is designed specifically to handle that kind of uncertainty. Yeah, I'm a software developer by training, and I was a huge ad, uh, agile advocate uh, back in the day. I practiced extreme programming. I'm, I still like to geek out about continuous integration and uh, pair programming and the like. What I would say is that most agile methodologies have their origin inside the IT departments of large companies, and they were originally designed to handle situations where the uncertainty was about how to accomplish a well-understood goal. So if you think back to like, you know, hey, we need a new payroll system and we need to port it from mainframes to commodity PC hardware. Like in the old days, especially, there was a lot of uncertainty about how to build those kinds of projects and using a waterfall development methodology was pretty bad. So you'd wind up way late, way over budget. And, you know, it's very likely that the final product wouldn't actually be that useful. So Lean Startup, I like to think of it as an extension of Agile now into the domain where both the problem and the solution are unknown. You can't sit a customer next to the engineer building the product because we don't necessarily know who the customer is. There's no product owner who can definitively say this is what the customer wants and this is the proper prioritization of features because we're trying to discover what the customer wants in the first place and that prioritization is a hypothesis that needs to be discovered. So another way to think about it is taking that iterative team building aspects of Agile and now applying them to a cross-functional team of business, marketing, engineering, QA, operations, all functions necessary to discover what is that business plan, what is it the customer wants, what's actually going to work in the future. Okay, there's a lot there. Let's start with the skepticism that I'm sure some people in the room have right now, okay? Like every few years, there's some new management fad. We're gonna think like a startup and be more creative and whatever. Like I just feel like there's a lot of people who've lived through a lot of these transformations and a lot of them turned out to be totally bogus. So the first thing is when we start to talk about mindset and culture and thinking of new ways of working, I, I think there's a lot of skepticism to say, wait a minute, is this real or is this some fad? And Honestly, there's only one way to answer that question, and that is to discover it for yourself by running experiments. Okay, you shouldn't take my word for it. You shouldn't take some other guru's word for it. You got to figure out what's actually going to work for our company. Now, I have done this corporate transformation with companies from 10, you know, 10 people in a garage to 10,000 to hundreds of thousands of employees and done it in digital industries, in old school industrial energy, manufacturing, healthcare, government, NGOs, you name it. Uh, I have seen these ideas applied and I've seen it work. And yet, everywhere I go, people always want to know, hey, how do I know it's going to work in my company? And like I said, the only way to find out is to run the experiment yourself. Here's what I would say. It's really important to do this in a certain specific order. And most managers I talk to have it backwards. So I have a little diagram in my book. I call it the startup way. It's very simple. A bottoms up pyramid, accountability, process, culture, people, in that order. Most people who want to do transformation say, I got to go hire some fancy people. I got to get some consultants in here. I got to find a, buy a startup, get a startup founder. Large companies by the law of large numbers already have a lot of entrepreneurs working for them. 
So swapping out the people and putting up posters to say everybody be more innovative is basically a waste of time. If you want to change mindset, you have to start with the systems, the deep systems of the company that hold people accountable. So how do people get promoted? How do budgets get allocated? How do we decide what to work on? How do we decide what's working? Uh, that's what I mean by accountability. Once you start to create small cross-functional teams in that agile way, you say, look, this five-person team who's tackling some new product that's completely uncertain, they're a startup. We're going to treat them like a startup. We're going to invest in them like a startup. We're going to put that team full-time only on this one project. We're going to give them a fixed budget and say, listen, do not come asking for more money next quarter, next year. Right? This is not annual appropriations anymore. We'll give you a fixed budget. Do not come asking for more money unless you have achieved customer validation that this product is actually a good idea. And when you do that, you set that accountability system in place, then that team can start to adopt the process elements of Lean Startup. Uh, they can self-organize around minimum viable products and the build, measure, learn feedback loop and all the split testing. And if you've heard about A-B testing, if you've heard about continuous deployment, if you've heard about the kind of uh, the and on cord and Kanban versions of Lean Startup, that's the stuff that we're famous for, but that requires this accountability piece. And if you've never seen this, in person. You'll just have to take my word for it. I have worked with some of the most bureaucratic, boring, just absolute dyed in the wool, corporate bureaucratic like gatekeepers who you would look at their resume and say, this person doesn't have an innovative bone in their body. I have seen teams of those people with a different accountability system, different process, self-organize into a totally innovative startup culture, indistinguishable from what I can walk down the street and see here in San Francisco. And that is how you attract and retain the best people in the 21st century. I wouldn't try to encourage you to do it, okay? I'm the anti-salesman for Lean Startup. If it makes sense for your company, then you'll discover that for yourself if you run the right experiment. And if it's not right for your company, then it doesn't matter what fancy mumbo jumbo I offer you. So like, I'll, you know, I'll give you an example. I did a huge transformation project at GE. GE is like, uh, you know, 300,000 employees, more than $100 billion in revenue, like a, a genuinely large company, uh, even by corporate standards. And, you know, I did a lot of talks there and they knew me well. You know, when the book came out, they were at my launch party. So we had a pre-existing relationship. But at a certain point, Jeff Immelt, the CEO, said, I think it's time for us to take this more seriously. Now, what he could have done is bought a lot of copies of my book and made everybody read it. And he could have put up a bunch of posters with my picture on it saying, Guru Eric Reese says, be fast or whatever. Like, there's a lot of nonsense he could have done that would have been a waste of time. And although I would have made a lot of money from it, it would have been a, a true waste. And I'm grateful that he didn't. What he said instead was, first, let's start by seeing how our senior managers relate to this idea in concept. So, you know, we did a lot of training and discussions with the most senior managers to test the concept and see if they were open to running the experiment. And then he said, all right, I'm going to choose the first project. He personally chose it. He deliberately chose something far away from my expertise. It was a very technical piece of industrial equipment in the energy generation sector. I mean, I didn't know an engine from a turbine when I started working with GE. Okay, so this was like way out of my domain. Multi-hundred million dollar investment, five-year plan, like the very classic old school R&D type project. And we did a workshop together to experiment to see could we change the this team with Lean Startup Ideas. The team was skeptical, the VPs, everyone was very skeptical, but we kept an open mind, we did the experiment, and we took that team from a project plan where they would do one giant release worldwide after five years of R&D to a minimum viable product attempt where they would come up with a new version of it every year for five years, and they got to a much better place than they would have without Lean Startup, and that said, okay, that sounds pretty good. That worked for one project, now let's do four projects. And I remember this being GE, the first four projects was like a neonatal incubator, a refrigerator, uh, engine, like a, a combined cycle power plant turbine, and, uh, and a high science medical device, like a uh, uh, far, like futuristic uh, piece of technology. No software, no apps, nothing easy, okay? We did hard projects to see, does this really work? And when that went pretty well, then we started doing internal projects. We did a HR project about uh, how we hire people and we did a project about uh, corporate acquisitions and we did a project about uh, the terms, legal terms and conditions assigned to energy projects when they get sold. I mean, it was a wide range, but we were testing. How does this work across every division, every region of the company? We did projects in India, China. We did a go-to-market project in Iraq. I mean, we were all over the world 
really proving out that this could work for every aspect of the corporation. And then and only then, we had built up a huge critical mass of success of projects. And then Jeff Immelt made the decision, based on the evidence that we could bring him that this worked, that all 5,000 senior managers in the company have to be trained, that every one of his divisional leaders have to get trained, that they would build a program that they called FastWorks based on Lean Startup uh, to roll it out company-wide. That really is the sequence that this should go in. And now some people hear me tell this story and they say, well, if it worked for G, it's going to work for me. And I say that, listen, they're a remarkable company. They're very, 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 very disciplined. They have been through this before, right? They've been through Six Sigma. They have been through workout. They have the discipline and the investment in training to do this. I don't make any claim that this will work for any company. All I can say is run the experiment and find out for yourself.